I have received notice from the Minister of Education that he wishes to make a statement on GCSE qualification, market and grading. Can I remind the Minister, can I remind the Minister of the requirement on Standing Order 18 for the statement to be made available to members as early as possible and at least 30 minutes before the delivery of the statement? Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker, for that admonishment. I thought that the statement had been made available, but uh, was it not? Okay, it was supposed to have been. The statement is now available, but not 30 minutes before the commencement of the statement. Okay, I think may, may also, Mr Speaker, I think the earlier indicative timings had a slightly later, so that had indications. Uh, obviously, Mr Speaker, then I wish to make an announcement on the GCSE qualification market and associated grades awarded in Northern Ireland. GCSEs form a uh, a core aspect of post-primary education in Northern Ireland. They are not only the qualifications to be taken, but they constitute a standard to which the great majority of our learners aspire at the end of compulsory education. Uh, and we are very successful in Northern Ireland with a higher percentage of pupils in Northern Ireland consistently achieving five, GCSE, uh, five G GCSEs or more, uh, including English and Maths, than their counterparts in England and Wales. Uh, and obviously, we tend to. Uh, better qualifications of a different, slightly different nature to Scotland as well. It is essential that our young people, schools, parents and employers have confidence in the GCSEs available here. GCSEs must be understood and recognised uh, wherever they are taken, and they must support the attainment and progression of our learners. For these reasons, I have reviewed the existing policies in relation to GCSEs in line with my desire for a child-centred education system. Schools need to have access to qualifications designed here in Northern Ireland meeting the needs of our own learners and our own economy. That being the case, CCEA will continue to offer GCSEs with distinctive characteristics that are valued by schools here. We have a statutory curriculum of which we can be a proud, and it is important uh, that there is a GCSE offer that reflects the qualities of that curriculum with its recognition of skills development and employability in the 21st century. It is equally important that teachers and school leaders are free to exercise their professional discretion in choosing exam specifications that can help their pupils enjoy learning and achieve and that are relevant to the needs of our economy and society. Our qualification system has worked well uh, for the pupils of Northern Ireland down the years, but in light of the changes to England, there, were, there are some concerns that have arisen, namely around the issues of comparability and portability of our local GCSE qualifications and the continuation of the open market and qualifications for schools in Northern Ireland. Uh, with regard to the former, uh, of comparability and portability. The overriding concern is that, that, no, uh, that no pupil in Northern Ireland runs the risk of being disadvantaged. In particular, this relates to two aspects. The top end of qualifications, uh, which particularly impact on the issue of places on high demand, high qualification degree courses, and also to the mid-range uh, qualifications, which could have an impact on future employment in other parts of the United Kingdom. While the numbers potentially impacted by these problems are likely to be low, nevertheless, they are real concerns that need to be addressed. Similarly, on probably the bigger issue of the impact of qualifications markets in Northern Ireland, with the announcement of the withdrawal uh, from the Northern Ireland GCSE market of exam boards, AQA, OCR, and latterly Pearson, this restricts choice for schools and pupils. It leaves gaps in provision for some subjects, which would have to be filled very quickly by local development of new courses, which would be at the cost of the public purse. Now, while others may have been distracted by side issues, it is these core issues of comparability, portability and the open market that I have concentrated on and sought outcomes to resolve. On the issue of uh, comparability and portability, it is necessary to give some clarity around grading. The new grading system in England is to be anchored to the uh, alphabetical grades at two points. Uh, the bottom of grade 4 will be anchored to the bottom of grade C, and the bottom of grade 7 will be anchored to the bottom of grade A. These shall provide the necessary points of reference. I am proposing that uh, alphabetical grading of C as GCSEs will remain consistent with the alphabetical grading in the past, with two exceptions. Firstly, in order to ensure that uh, our highest achievers are able to demonstrate comparable excellence with their contemporaries in England, CCEA will realign the A star to reflect the level of attainment at grade 9 in the 9 to 1 GCSEs. Not only will this restore the distinction of the A, uh, the a star as a mark of outstanding achievement, and also but also restore the value of grade A as a high level achievement within the reach of our most able learners. 
Secondly, in England, it's been decided that Grade 5 shall be the benchmark performance for attainment at Key Stage 4. The grade is higher than Grade C, which marks the boundary of the Level 2 qualification with, uh, within all GSESEs. Uh, that achievement of which is a core element of the PFG framework. Uh, I have to say as well that the uh, linking in with uh, at level two qualification as a, as a bottom point is also an internationally recognised comparison. In order not to disadvantage our young people because of the changes at, at grade five, SIA will additionally be asked to identify a new reference point on the grading scale to equate to, the, uh, to grade five. This new grade, C star, will provide additional information on the level of attainment. On the issue of the exam, uh, examination market, this includes choosing alternative specifications to those offered by CCA in certain subjects, as well as ask, having us, uh, access to a range of specifications that CCA does not offer. Rather than restrict schools in their choice, they should have a wider range of GCSEs to choose from, including those in England uh, under the recent reforms which are graded 9 to 1. I have therefore decided to lift the current restriction upon the accreditation of 9 to 1 GCSEs. Now, there are a small number of curriculum-based exceptions uh, to the reopening of the market. These exceptions reflect continuity with the statutory curriculum in, in Northern Ireland and the view of key stakeholders, including educationists and the business community. Specifically, it shall remain the case that the assessment of speaking and listening, um, which sometimes maybe in terms of assessment in this house may, may uh, fall short, uh, must be included and contribute towards the overall grade in the award of GCSE English language. Also consistent with the policy at A level, the assessment of practical skills must be contributed and uh, contribute towards the overall grade in the award of GCSE sciences. By reopening the market in this way, our learners will be able to, uh, to access GCSE courses leading to both alphabetical grades and numerical grades. Depending upon the decision of schools, some young people will leave school with a, a record of attainment that consists of a mixture of letters and numbers. But that practice is a little different from what happens now with there's a mixture of qualifications that, that school leavers can get at level two with GCSE, BTEC, level two certificates and diplomas which are expressed in different ways. I am pleased to inform members that in light of uh, my decision, AQA, OCR and Pearson exam bodies have confirmed to the department in writing that they will make their GCSE specifications available here again with immediate effect. They have in effect reversed their decision. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, I'm satisfied that this revision of policy preserves the best in our uh, existing qualification system while opening up the opportunity for our young people to access a wider range of subject specifications. It addresses the challenges of uh, comparability and portability to the overall benefit of our learners and the economy. Thank you. Call Mrs. Rosemary Barton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister, I thank you for your statement and welcome the reopening of the market choice for the teachers and pupils of the other examining boards. I think this is very welcome here within our schools. However, in relation to the, compar the comparability and portability, will the addition of a further grade C star not only add to further confusion within the grades, would it not have been simpler to adopt the English numeric system for everybody. Thank you. I mean, the member, I think, whenever she was on committee, raised the issue of comparability and uh, portability as being the key issues for individuals, and she's right in relation to that. Members have got to realise that it's not simply a question of shifting to 9 to 1. The English changes that were made went well beyond simply 9 to 1 and created a new system which involves a removal of modularisation. It removed practical classes. It moved a shift away from skills base in terms of examination results. So if you're actually going to change to the English system, you actually require a number of years' worth of work that will be required. Indeed, even the situation in England is in a position where they are phasing this in in terms of its implementation over a three-year period. So it's not something that could be done, even if it was desirable. And I think some of the aspects of the changes in England would not be to the advantage of, of some of our pupils here. If, however, you simply make a, a mixture, you, you simply shift over to nine to one, you're still left with the position of people, particularly when it comes to the job markets, of trying to compare different qualifications at different levels. So, for example, it would mean that somebody graduating with a nine to one grade, uh, if they are then competing against somebody who had operated under the old system, who had qualified uh, in, an, in an alphabetical situation, whether they're coming to an employer, uh, that employer is making judgments between letters and numbers under those circumstances. So whatever you do, there is going to be that level of uh, disjoint. 
The important thing is, though, that, that the alignment of a, a C star grade to five, which is what would be recognised across the water as being the, sort of the benchmark, you actually then create that direct comparable to importability. And similarly with the A star, particularly, which will impact in on, on high level results. That is actually the change that, that needs to be made. That is what will actually bring things into to line. And I think that uh, while there's no perfect solution on it, it's the best solution that I think that can be offered. Well, the Chair of the Committee for Education, Mr. Barry McElduff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, can I thank the Minister for his statement to the House this morning and for meeting with myself and the Clerk of the Committee earlier to give me a heads up on this matter and also to take receipt uh, of two letters which I did hand to the Minister from uh, Irish medium schools regarding the withdrawal of nurture unit funding. One of the ways in which your education system ensures equality is through our qualification system. Our GCSEs are rightly recognised as being of very good quality. Um, so, and just setting the question for setting the context for my main question, uh, the minister has taken one approach uh, different to the previous minister. Perhaps he could explain why. And can I ask the minister, does he think that the qualifications evolution in England has finished its journey? Or does he believe that we will have to make further changes to our system in order to maintain GCSE comparability and portability? You know, what are the educational arguments and how is this pupil-centred? Thank the, the member for his, his comments in, in relation to that. And can I assure him as well that in terms of moving forward, uh, I know it's not directly related to the statement, all schools will be treated on an equal basis. And I should indicate that while there are some legal issues in relation to the, the former issue, uh, that it's not a position of money being withdrawn. It's money was sought which wasn't there and then money wasn't given on that, on that basis. Money wasn't given to the department uh, on, that, on that basis. So there wasn't a question of money that, that was agreed and then being cut, uh, just to clarify on that point. On the issue uh, of, I suppose I'm tempted to say that uh, he asked, talks about the evolution of the, the system. I suppose as a good DUP man, I don't particularly, wouldn't be the biggest fan of evolution in, in that regard. Uh, but. Uh, Taking seriously, I suppose, the, the issue, why is there a need for a degree of change on it? I think that, broadly speaking, the overall qualification system within Northern Ireland is one that has worked well. So from that point of view, I, I wasn't looking for revolution in this. And I think uh, keeping the bulk of the system, I think, is the right way of doing it. I was trying to address very specific concerns, which particularly relate to both potential acceptance into universities, acceptance in the wider context of the job market, but also actually particularly the real pressure that came from schools to say that uh, they would have to change their specifications, they would have to find new exam courses and indeed on the basis of the development of that. So it's, it's about giving that level of, of choice to people and I think that this is a, a sort of a practical solution to be able to provide that while retaining, I think there are many very good aspects of our curriculum system and our qualification system with anyone retaining that at present. Call Mr Gordon Dunn. Can I thank the Minister for his statement. Can the Minister perhaps further explain how this proposal improves portability and comparability of qualifications in Northern Ireland? Well, I've indicated that probably for schools, um, the biggest issue is probably the, the open market. But for individual pupils and parents and teachers, it's quite often the, the comparability and portability will be uh, key to, the, to this. Because there will be, and maybe sometimes it's maybe more of a perception than, than a frequent reality, but there will be a concern that if there isn't that comparability and portability, will an individual pupil be adversely affected, either in terms of entry to the job market or indeed uh, in terms of qualification on that basis. I think that the, the two key changes here, indeed, plus also the, the affirmation of another situation, will ensure that comparability and portability. First of all, the recalibrated A plus will mean that there's parity with, with, uh, with grade nine, which may well mean that in some cases where there is a final decision to be taken at a university, on a high specification course which requires high qualifications that that person can be guaranteed not to be disadvantaged and similarly I think with national employers may well look in years to come at the issue of a grade five as being the minimum qualifications that are required to obtain a job and the development of the C star allows that direct comparability on that side of it as well it's also important to note as well on the issue of portability and comparability what has been retained and by anchoring the bottom of the C to the grade four as the minimum point for level two qualification, that is actually something which is internationally recognized and means that from an international perspective and indeed a national perspective, uh, pupils in Northern Ireland will not be disadvantaged on that front either. 
Call Mr. Colin McGrath. Speaker, and I welcome the announcement from the Minister this morning. But could I ask the Minister, was the, uh, were schools thoroughly consulted regarding these changes, um, given that one sector, the IME, were outside this morning and felt thoroughly disappointed about not being consulted about changes that impacted them? Well, with respect, on it, I mean, the IME issue is a, is a separate issue in terms of funding. And as I indicated in, in relation to that, that there's maybe been a little bit of misinformation in relation to that because it was not a question of money being cut. It was the fact that uh, money had not been provided externally to the department in connection with, with that. Uh, so the money was never there in the first place. Uh, now, communication always needs to be important. There will be steps taken to ensure that, that schools are notified in relation to this. Um, the member will realise that in terms of trying to sort out this problem, there has been considerable feedback that we've got from earlier decisions from schools, many of whom wanted this, this sorted. Uh, I have been trying to give certainty to this issue and, and the reason particularly why it has happened as quickly as it has happened because I wanted to give schools a level of certainty before the end of the school term. So I think from that point of view I think schools generally speaking will be, generally speaking, will be happy at this decision and see that, that level. Clearly we will be um, informing schools on that basis to ensure that you know, they are brought uh, up to step with this. But I mean, don't forget this is ultimately in terms of the position of schools also about giving them the flexibility of choice. No one, for instance, in terms of the AQA, OCR, Pearson, is suggesting down schools that they have to take this particular route or indeed use that, but a number of schools do at present. They represent maybe around about a quarter of the, of the market. So it's, it's ultimately up to schools. We'll make very individual choices about giving them that, that flexibility. So there's no imposition in that sense on schools, quite the reverse. Call Mr Stuart Dixon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for your statement this morning. Minister, undoubtedly the uh, mixing of numbers and letters are confusing. They're confusing for students, pupils and teachers. But can you assure the House that uh, in the changes that you've made today, that both employers and further education establishments will have a thorough understanding of the value of the numbers and letters? Certainly. I, mean, look, I think the, the, uh, it is important that there is that proper communication with people. Don't forget, as I said, had we moved simply to a nine-to-one system, you would then be left with, with a different confusion, but a confusion never, nonetheless on it. Uh, there has been, I think, produced, and indeed, uh, Department, I can't quite lay my hands on it immediately, but um, we have produced more or less a sort of a, like a grid system which clearly shows in a very clear way. Um, it might be described almost as idiot-proof to be able to understand. Um, I was just about able to grasp it, so it passed the test on that, on that basis. Uh, but it is very clear. The key element with that will be, particularly for employment, is the minimum grades side of things. And so particularly if we have a situation that nationally a grade five, instead of being the position of the, the cutoff point in terms of level two, is regarded as the minimum requirement potentially for a job, to align a, a new C star with that will mean that there's no disadvantage and it will be clearly understood by employers there. Similarly, this, the same can apply here. And I suspect, I wonder if we reach a situation that in a year's two's time, employers in other parts of the United Kingdom treat a grade five as being the minimum point for uh, qualifications for employment. It may well be that quite a few employers in Northern Ireland similarly adopt a, a position. So therefore, we're keeping uh, people from an employability point of view, both inside and outside Northern Ireland, in step with uh, developments. Call Ms. Carla Lockhart. Thank you very much, and can I thank the Minister uh, for his statement this morning. It's certainly encouraging uh, to hear the handle that he has uh, got on this issue. Uh, can the Minister further explain what actions you are going to take to communicate this to schools and to teachers as well? My department today will be, and I think it is important that that, that message has got out. You know, I suspect that this, this will be sort of reasonably well known, but to be certain in relation to that, my, school is, my, sorry, my department is writing out to all schools today on the decision uh, on, on grading, maybe a Freudian slip there, uh, on the impact of availability so that schools are completely informed. Um, clearly in, in that sense, and mention has been made about consultation, I suppose the, the issue to some extent was that, uh, and I'm sure the, the Speaker would admonish me if otherwise, in terms of communication, uh, of notifying what the final decision was, the first people that, that I've spoken to has been the House, indeed the Chair, because I think it's important that the priority is given. You know, I could have, at the end of last week, written out the schools to let them know what was happening, but it's important actually the first people that, that learn of this are the people in this, in this chamber. But that will be done today, 
um, and schools will therefore know before the end of term what the position is. Call Ms. Catherine Seeley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, um, and can I thank the Minister for his statement and the opportunity to question him this morning. And I'm sure the Minister doesn't need me to tell him that grading GCSEs alphabetically or numerically doesn't change how a pupil performs, so I would question the educational argument behind this decision. However, given your comment and commitment to child-centred education, can I seek ensure assurances from the Minister that as well as taking action to improve GCSE attainment, that you will do all you can to extend full-time special school preschool provision to as many children as possible, including those, those parents of children wanting to send their children to Fleming Fulton. Can I remind the member that the question should be on the Minister's statement. It's for the Minister to decide if he wishes to answer. Well, I, I commend the member on, on uh, levering in sort of that, that other subject. I suppose in the broader level, on it, in the same way as, as I um, I'll try and find a tangential, but in the same way as that it's a child-centred approach that we've taken to GCSEs, uh, I'm keen to support a child-centred approach to education as a whole. I want the maximum amount of availability to uh, pupils of whatever age uh, across the board. The very major constraint that, that all of us face within the executive as a whole, but within education, is the issue of resources. Uh, and I would simply say that if we are to extend resources on it, um, any persuasion she's able to give for the Honourable Member for South Belfast to provide more money to the Department of Education will be greatly appreciated. I call Mr. Sammy Douglas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for his statement th th this morning? Um, could I ask the Minister if he could outline what the impact will be on Year 11 and Year 12 pupils? Oh, yeah. As indicated, I think in terms of what are currently year level troubles, there's, there's no implications. Well, they, they're obviously due to receive their, their grades uh, over the summer. And from that point of view, irrespective of the awarding organisation, it will be uh, on the basis of uh, letters. For pupils who are finishing uh, year 11, who've completed their first GCSE courses, those who are actually doing English boards at present, um, there will be two subjects affected although it, uh, my understanding is it's a very minimal number on this, which would be English and maths. The position that's been taken in terms of the English boards has been that they're phasing this in effectively over three years. So an English board, if they are offering, for instance, in history uh, for uh, 2017, will be offering a letter. If it's, if it's maths or English, it will be a number. They will then switch most of their subjects similarly to the, uh, to the situation as regards to the numerical grading. For that. And then I think finally finished by completing that process in 2019. So from that point of view, uh, because I understand there's, there's very, very few of any pupils in Northern Ireland do English through uh, a, a, one of the English boards, and a relatively limited number that do the maths course through the, the English boards, there would actually be very little impact at all on year 11 and none on the current year 12. Well, Ms. Jennifer McCann. Um, just to thank the Minister, but given the importance of investment in child's early years in terms of the personal and social development and the, the fact that that impacts on their attainment at GCSE level, can the Minister explain why he has withdrawn funding from two Irish medium primary schools, given the fact that he could have funded them from his own departmental allocation? Well, with res respect uh, on it, I, uh, you know, I, I've, I've tried to deal with that already on it, having said that it's not the statements on GCSE qualifications and that, but... I appreciate, the point. I appreciate the point that the, the, minister, uh, the member has made in, in relation to it, but really a statement can only answer questions in relation to the, the statement. Call Mr Gordon Lyons. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker, and can I welcome the, the minister's statement. Can the minister uh, inform the House um, if Ofqual have offered any uh, opinion on the changes? Ofqual, I mean, one of the useful things with this was I mentioned that, that really in terms of the detail of a final decision, it's only been this, depart uh, this assembly that, that has been uh, directly informed of it. Obviously, soundings to make sure that we would not run into difficulties with either Ofqual or indeed the other examining bodies were, were made. Ofqual, I think, has confirmed that there is no, they have no particular issues with the, um, uh, they have no issues with the proposals. They are, from that point of view, relaxed about them. We have a situation where CCA were, are happy to implement these proposals, uh, and also the uh, awarding bodies within. Uh, within England have indicated that on the basis of these proposals they will be now uh, remaining in or coming back to the Northern Ireland market. So from that point of view, the regulatory and, and qualification bodies are all effectively are content with what is, what is there. 
That concludes questions uh, to the Minister's statement.